Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. I very welcome my friends and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. We need to talk about, about Paul Cornell. And if you, if, you, if you want to, please smash the subscribe button. Please smash the like button. And please follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. So I've already, I've always known what political pathway Paul Cornell stands by. He's an SJW. He's an extremist. He's an extreme leftist. That's his point of view. And he's entitled to that opinion. But his behaviour yesterday, just before the Doctor Who lockdown tweet along of one of the most amazing Doctor Who stories of all time, was despicable and vindictive. He blocked nearly half of the Doctor Who fandom on Twitter. He did it just before the tweet along so we couldn't see his tweets. I spoke about this expressively. On Twitter. So why why was he blocking people? He's literally blocked people who don't like the modern current irritation of Doctor Who. But you know me, I do many Doctor Who videos. Have I ever swore? Have I ever been disrespectful to Jodie Whittaker or Chris Chibnall? Or have I constructively criticised them on what they've done in this current irritation? I think you know I'm a fair person. All I've ever said about the current irritation of Doctor Who, that it's bland and vanilla and boring, with very, very little characterisation. Unlike the previous interpretations of Doctor Who, whether they be the classics or the pr previous kind of irritations with Stephen Moffat and Russell T Davies. Now, I want to be clear here. If you want to block me, or mute me, that's your right. I'm not going to throw my toys out the pram. It's free. If you don't want me to be on your timeline, if you don't want to hear what I've got to say, but to block someone just because they have the opinion that you don't have. I'm not a right winger. I don't support Trump. I don't support Brexit. But as I've always said, just because you do support those things, it doesn't uh, mean you're you're a bad person, you're just coming from the opposite point of view that I do. Now, to block half the fandom. Now, Doctor Who Lockdown, which was pretty much created by Emily Wright, brilliant, brilliant. It's been so positive and amazing and wonderful, right? But what he did was so toxic and so mean mean-spirited. And as I say, I don't feel bad for me, but I was depressed about it for about an hour before and after the event. Not for me, but for you, for the rest of the fans who sat there scratching their heads and wondering why this man had blocked you when all you ever did was constructive about your opinions about the current irritation of Doctor Who. This is where we are now. We are in a cultural war. And you're not allowed to air your opinions, even if they're polite and constructive and, and logical. Now, he did quite a few kind of little pieces of fiction. Now, he did one called The Shadow in the Mirror, right? Which was basically continuing on from the two part that he wrote. Let me say again, Paul Cornell's season three two part of Doctor Who was one of the most amazing, imaginative pieces of Doctor Who storytelling I've ever seen. But looking at it again, his agenda is there. Lots of racism, lots of bad racist white people, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And he does something else in that episode. Have you noticed how when he, um, when the doctor um, goes from John Smith to being the doctor again, he's really arrogant. He's quite a toxic character. I understand the messages and the commentary he's trying to make. But let's talk about this piece of fiction called The Shadow in the Mirror. So this is all about the girl with the balloon in the two-parter. She's trapped in the mirror. So the 13th Doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, the first female Doctor, of course. I saw this coming as soon as it's, this story starts. She's come to release this little girl. And um, it amuses me. No, 
It disgusted me. So this is what he writes for the 13th Doctor to say, that some versions of the Doctor are sick inside. Yes, this man actually wrote this. So who are the versions of the Doctor that are so bad? Well, he's obviously talking about every one of the classic Doctors because they were men of their time, right? Is he talking about Russell T Davies' Doctors? I probably think so. You see, the current SJW extreme left of the entertainment industry, which is all of them, like only want to represent two forms of people, beta males and females. They don't like alphas. People like me, they don't like us. It's as simple as that. And just watching this story and just thinking, wow, this guy has major issues. And when I think about these people, they constant talk about, constantly talk about positive vibes and um, representation and tolerance. That's the word I've been looking for for the past five minutes. Tolerance. What's tolerant about blocking half the fandom? How is that tolerant, Paul? That's very intolerant. You basically blocked a group of people, not individuals, a group of people. Now, I think I understand what happened. Because he also blocked uh, the Twitter account called Who Even Leap. Who Even Leap is really good. Um, asks the fans to make quotes up and they retweet them. I don't know what Who Even Leap did to deserve your blocking poll. You really have to look at yourself in shillelagh. I said the word wrong. You have to look at yourself inside. When you woke up this morning, I hope that you understood something about yourself. It's okay to have political points of view. It's okay to even air those views. But whatever political view we air, we've got to expect a response, the opposite response. Politics garners a lot of passion, a lot of opinion, a lot of reaction, and mostly a lot of toxic reaction, because everyone's coming from certain points of view. But when you actually want to gag people because they don't like the modern irritation of Doctor Who, and I'll say this again, Emily always talks about, you know, this being positive and so all the fans can get together. I noticed that Emily actually only responds to other females, right? So we know what's happening here. They don't want us as Doctor Who fans anymore. They don't want us watching the product. They want to swap us for beta males and females. And I guess it now. I understand it's not just Doctor Who. It's Star Wars, it's comic book movie universes, it's the whole industry. They want rid of us. They simply don't like us. They want to choose who consume their platforms. So by making them the way they are, bland and vanilla, they can drive us away. And their idea is, is to bring in the beta males and the females. That really worked out for Birds of Prey, didn't it? They didn't make much of a profit now, did they? Doctor Who is losing ratings left, right and centre. It's certainly not going up and it's certainly not sticking. This is where we are now. But that's another conversation for another time. So we have got a bunch of extremists running the entertainment industry. And I've said this before, I'm fine. I've got my collections of films and TV shows I can relive and enjoy whenever I want. You can destroy the whole industry as far as I, I care. It's you that won't be working. But when someone writes a piece of fiction and pretty much labels many versions of this iconic character as sick inside. And let's talk about releasing this child. Now, in this, in, in, in her sides of the dialogue, she's saying, basically, I'm still going to kill you. I'm still going to go around and do bad things. But she releases her. She takes her back to her own world. But I suppose you could call this a narrative. And something else that's really funny about this story by Paul Cornell, you notice that the female doctor, the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker, doesn't go back and release the male members of this villainy. Just that female. So if you're a female, I suppose, Paul, it's okay to be a serial killer. It's okay to be a paedophile. It's okay to commit crimes and be forgiven. And for the world to show tolerance. But when it comes to show tolerance to men, it's not all right. This is what they did to Joaquin Phoenix's The Joker. Do you remember? It's not OK to be a mentally ill man, apparently. Uh, those people don't deserve tolerance, right? They're just making excuses for what they do. 
It's wrong, one rule for one, and it's another rule for the rest of us. And that's what it's all about. But my main point here is that the man literally blocked half the fandom. He wanted to gag us. And all we wanted to do was watch with him. What's one of the best things you like about your Twitter experience, opposed to the other social media platforms? Mine is to be able to follow my heroes, my favourite writers, my favourite producers and actors and directors. Up to now, I've been blocked by Noel Clark, the presenter Matthew Wright, Tracy Ann Oberman, uh, and, and many more. Do I come across as a bad person? No, I just have opposing opinions to them. They put their opinions out there. They say they have the right to express their opinions just because they're actors doesn't mean they should remain quiet. And I agree with that. But you've got to expect a, a constructive opposing opinion. And to gag people just because they don't agree with you and they're not kissing your uh, butt, it seems a very interesting thing. But of course, these people are living in a bubble. It wouldn't have surprised me if Paul Cornell has blocked Christopher Eccleston on Instagram. What was ironic about all of us being blocked? That many, many people who wasn't blocked actually were screenshotting everything he posted during the two episodes so we could all read it. So basically, his agenda failed. But these people talk about kindness and tolerance. And by blocking us all, he showed an intolerance. I don't dislike Paul. I like Paul. I respect Paul as a creative. But we have to start thinking about what's going on here. Nobody, I look, I think he muted me ages ago and I kind of got that. But muting an opinion doesn't take it away. Whether you like it or not, Paul, the BBC and all the other country club people Russell T. Davis, Stephen Moffat, who I absolutely admire and gave us back Doctor Who. This is the facts. The current irritation of Doctor Who is boring, bland and vanilla. It is not boring, bland and vanilla because we have a female doctor. It's boring, bland and vanilla because of the ideology behind it. And that's the problem with today's creatives. They may know how to put pen to paper. They may know how to send an email. They may know where to point the camera, but they don't know how to tell good stories and define great characters and give great characterizations. This is where they are so behind the people that we grew up with. Now they will call those people toxic males or whatever you call them, want to call them. But this is where we are now. The election of Donald Trump and Brexit and Boris Johnson has driven the, the entertainment industry insane. And in the end of the day, what's losing out here? The entertainment industry platform that we used to enjoy. They're destroying it because they're angry. I'm angry the way the political system is now. But I wouldn't destroy a whole platform over it. They, they talk about toxicity and intolerance. They're the, they're the intolerant ones. They're the toxic ones. What Paul did yesterday was so toxic and unkind. And I'm sorry for all the Doctor Who fans whose hearts were broken from what Paul did. A very sad state of events. Very sad. We need to live together as consumer and creatives. As I say, the Twitter platform is beautiful. It brings fans, consumers and creators and actors together. But we're going to disagree sometimes. I don't block everyone who disagrees with me. God, people swear at me in inbox, threatening me, right? I don't block them. I just laugh and move on. So if I can do that, why can't you? I admire you, Paul. I wanted to speak with you on Twitter while we watched those episodes. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to attack you. I didn't want to say anything bad about you. And now you've given me such a bad impression of you. You've given a whole fandom a bad impression of you. It's obvious you have very extreme views and they are your views. You come from that point of view and that's fine. If you want to hate all men, all alpha males, that's up to you. But what you and your people are actually doing is excluding people from the entertainment industry. You're talking about representation. That's not what you're doing. You're bringing other people in and kicking other people out. That is an inclusion. That is intolerance. And that is a representation, Paul. In fact, 
you may be one of the most intolerant people that I've ever, ever experienced. I'm sorry, Paul, that you feel this way. I'm sorry that everyone who's worked on Modern Who hates the Doctor Who fans. I'm sorry that you hate us. I'm sorry that you despise us. Because if you took the time, you would have a great experience with us. We love you. We love what you've given us. But we just have opinions. Like you have the right to air your opinions, we have the right to air ours. I love Doctor Who. And you, or anyone else, will never drive me away. I don't care if Russell T Davies blocks me. I don't care if Stephen Moffat blocks me off of Twitter and Instagram. I'm still going to join on in the tweet alongs and be positive and celebrate what's going on with those things. We've got Dalek next Thursday. I'm going to be there. If Emily Rosina wants to block me, if Russell wants to block me, if all the people that are going to talk, the prominent people are going to be tweeting, are going to block me. I don't care. I can still tweet along with the rest of the fans. And you see, always remember, the art is always superior to the artist. So maybe we need to look at that and think about that. And basically, as long as I can tweet along with Doctor Who fans who enjoy the same stuff and have different opinions and we can debate, that's all that matters to me. The fans are all that matters. If creatives, if creatives want to take this line, let's be honest here, not a lot of YouTubers, especially WhoTubers, which I have lots of issues with, are going to be talking about Paul Cornell. And the wrong thing, the toxic thing, the intolerant thing he did yesterday by blocking half the fandom. Hootubers are the most ambivalent, most authoritarian groups of Doctor Who fans you can get. If you don't like the modern irritation of Doctor Who, you're a bad person. How dare you? Some people weren't happy that Joe Martin was part of the comic relief thing, right? I didn't have an issue about that. She is the Doctor now. And that's fair enough. There's nothing wrong with that. But even though I don't agree with those people being upset by it, I will fight for their right to say it. That's the difference. I respect different points of view. I'm not like the current people in the entertainment industry or the current people running Doctor Who. I respect everyone and their points of view. So when you want to gag people and block them, that says something about you. It was very upsetting to me. Very, as, as I say, not because I was blocked. I've been blocked by many famous people and it's fine because just because someone's elite and has worked in this industry doesn't make them superior to me. I would say I'm superior to them. While I'm arrogant, I think I'm superior to most people, even though I don't have many subscribers and many views on my videos. When I look in the mirror, I like what I see. That shocks you, doesn't it? Not much to look at, right? But I like myself. I have self-confidence. I love Doctor Who. I will always love Doctor Who. No better who tries to gag me or who tries to block me. And I will repeat what I've already said. What you did yesterday, Paul, says a hell of a lot more about you than it does about us. Think about your actions. Think about your intolerance and think about your toxicity. But you're never going to drive us away from loving Doctor Who. Comment down below. Like, share and subscribe. I want to hear what you've got to say about this despicable kind of um, events that took place yesterday. I'll be back sometime with more Doctor Who videos. Have a lovely day. I'll see you again soon.